I wanted to create my own noise source for multiple sound synthesis projects, and PCBWay sponsored the project, providing PCBs I can use to make my own white noise and pink noise generator module. White noise and pink noise have lots of uses in audio, including synthesizing instrument sounds or creating other sound effects. 8-bit video game systems used sound chips that provided various audio waveforms along with noise, which could be used for cymbals or snare drum sounds, or wind noises, among other things. And in the early 80s era of synthesized drums in electronic music, commercial drum machines used oscillators and noise generators to create percussion sounds. For example, a snare drum may be reproduced by creating a tone with an oscillator followed by some noise to mimic the sound of the snare wires rattling. Here's the schematic of the noise generator. It's basically a digital pseudo white noise generator and a pink noise filter. We've already covered how this pink noise filter works, so you can refer to that video for more info. But pink noise is basically the result of putting white noise through a low-pass filter with a roll-off of minus 3 dB per octave. Then I'm buffering the output of the filter to be able to interface to other circuit inputs without having any kind of loading effects between this filter and anything connected off board. I put a small arbitrary resistor in line with the output to help the op amp be able to handle any capacitive loading, and I didn't put a series DC block capacitor with any outputs because I plan to handle AC coupling at the inputs of other circuits, and I want it to be able to control the capacitance depending on the application of the noise source I'm using here. The whole board runs at 5 volts, including the op amps and the noise source. Since the digital white noise coming out of the ATtiny85 ranges from 0 to 5 volts, and I'm using an LM358 op amp, which isn't rail to rail, I needed to scale down the signal to allow it to fit within the op amp's operating range. I've discussed this circuit configuration in another video to show how I came up with these resistor values, so you can check that out if you want to know more. The op amp is being used as a buffer to drive the pink noise filter as well as a separate white noise output, so there's minimal loading between any stages and I have a nice low impedance driving source on each noise output. This op amp is set for unity gain, but I have the option to add attenuation or higher gain if needed. There are several ways to generate white noise, including the two-legged transistor method, but the results can vary depending on the exact transistor used, even if it's the same part number, two different transistors can be different, and it also depends on the exact voltage supply used, and it tends to need to be a little higher than what I'm working with right now. I wanted to keep everything running on the same 5 volt supply, so I went with this digital pseudo noise source for now. I can always experiment with other things in the future. This ATtiny85 just has the one output for generating digital noise, and I'm using a linear feedback shift register method. Here's an example of a 16-bit one. I'm actually using 31 bits in mine. So this is the sketch I came up with. Half of the sketch is comments. So I'm using 31 bits. I'm only using two feedback taps for the XOR, and using an ATtiny85, this is the board file I had to install to use the ATtiny, and I found it okay to use 8 or 16 megahertz internal oscillator in the IDE. I believe if I set it to 1 megahertz, it was actually sounding really weird. I'm not sure why, and I can't remember if it was definitely this combination, because I did so many tests. And in order to program the ATtiny85 on a breadboard, I used an Arduino Uno as an in-system programmer, so I referenced a video I did in the past on that. Here's my non-zero number to initialize my 32-bit register, of which we're ignoring one bit to get 31. And I tried to explain here what we're doing, because those tap points, when they say position 3 and 31, they're starting from left to right as bit 1 all the way to 31. But of course, in memory, our 32-bit variable starts at the far right as bit 0, and it goes to bit 31 on the far left. So to get this position, I just have to remember what I'm telling the code to do here. So I'm doing that shift to get these tap points all the way down, doing the XOR, shifting the entire register over, and taking the output bit all the way back to the input, and taking one of these shift register pins, sending it out to the ATtiny pin, and that's my white noise. 
Since we previously evaluated the pink noise filter's performance over 20 Hz to 20 kHz, measuring the attenuation at various frequencies, for now I just want to do a quick test with the scope in FFT mode. Looking at the white noise output, it appears to have a relatively flat spectrum as expected, and the pink noise level is attenuating as frequency increases, which is the expected performance. And to get another view of the noise profile, I recorded a line-in sample of each source into Audacity so we could hear the noise as flat as possible without the microphone and the orange amp coloring it, so to speak. So here's what the white and pink noise sound like when recorded this way. Doing a spectrum plot in Audacity, we confirm the white noise is reasonably flat while the pink noise has the characteristic roll-off. So for now, let's just use this as a visual representation that for what we can get into the system, it looks like it's performing as expected and combining that with the scope and previous tests on the filter, everything looks good to me and sounds good. We're not trying to create laboratory grade equipment here. So as long as it sounds like noise, white or pink, we should be able to use it for audio projects and turn it into something a bit more melodic as time goes on. Thanks to PCB Way for sponsoring the project. Subscribe to catch future videos. And thanks for watching.